Kenya. All right. So my first website um, I sold, right? And since then, I realized that um, you know the, the most of the brands that I invest in, I do super duper long term. But when I was building my first website, I think this is interesting too because it's about you know you change your mind. You know, when I was young. <clears throat> Yeah, I actually started lots of different brands and a lot of them don't exist anymore. So I'm, I probably started four websites, four or five websites before the one that I first sold and got like, you know, a substantial enough amount of money for me to even think about it as a good amount of money. Um, and I didn't sell the other ones at all. And actually, I don't even think I made money on any of the other websites. But this is how I built that website up and um, was able to sell it. So um let me let me put this this camera down okay cool so i was i was lucky to get into website design html young as a lot of people did you know i'm 32 now in 2020 so uh 2021 so um you know back when i was getting in, into into html and photoshop that was my first real creative things this is back when I was eight. So after that, you know, I was kind of an entrepreneurial kid, sold some stuff in school, did some, continued with um, Photoshop technology, got into websites again through Adobe Dreamweaver, continued HTML and got into Adobe Dreamweaver, built some websites and that. Okay. So, but when I finally built my website, I actually um, spent a lot of time first on the name and finding a niche. So I think that's super core. It's like, okay, what's something that you think about and you do all the time? Something core to your lifestyle, something that um, you do that maybe not a lot of people do. Um, and then coming up with a really good name. I, I remember writing so many, I do this now, except for I do it a lot kind of faster, but I, I wrote about a bunch of different names and I would go Google them and like think about, okay, what would really fit into the, into the culture and sound cool, you know? And I think that's important because that stuff is based on intuition. A lot of people don't think about intuition, but intuition is just science. Your your brain is a genius. So if, if your intuition is doing calculations very fast, now it's about how do you articulate and manifest your your intuitions. And that gets even to more science, which is where you know people try to go all art or something like that. But um so yeah, I figured out I figured out a good branding model, and then the hard work of it was um, blog posts. So it was just off of blog posts. I don't even really want to make it complicated, but um, my whole thing was well, it wasn't just blog posts. Now that I think about it, it was a lot of blog posts. I got to the point where you know I was consistently posting five blog posts a day, and then two I would go look at um, Google articles, whatever was hot on Google News in my niche. I'll write an article about that. And then I would share these articles on the best places to share articles. And I was always looking for best places to share articles. Funnily enough, back then, social media was not a part of my strategy at all, really, except for Twitter. Sorry, so let me say Twitter. <laughs> but Facebook wasn't a part of my strategy until later on. And I didn't get a lot of success there um, when I was doing it. It just wasn't a big thing, you know, back then. This is 2011, 2012. But um, Twitter was really big. I would post a lot on Twitter, just funny things, short little funny things. Um, I would interact with a couple people and I would get, you know, 10 or so visits from Twitter. Now, um, I would also get, I'll say my main traffic driver at the time was this platform called StumbleUpon. And what StumbleUpon would do was deliver large amounts of traffic. Now, that doesn't, it, it doesn't exist anymore. And um, so, you know, I would be getting I got a bulk of, 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 I got a lot of traffic from there, but then I also got a lot of SEO because of the traffic that I got from there. And so by the end of it, you know, I was, I was top ranked from Google, so I was getting a lot of traffic from Google. There's a few articles where I write quotes articles. I had a quote article blow up. And one day I was um, one of the top 10 websites in the entire uh, world. Yeah. I know it was off of one article I wrote. Um, it, was, it was a quote, a top ten quote article, 
and it blew up on stumble upon and it got a ton of views and so for that day i went to go check there the, there's a few tools that were very active back then um they still exist but they they're a little bit different now but there's other tools but tools that let you see the, the where your website ranked especially if you filed with them alexa and quantcast those are the ones that i used at that time and um, yeah, they were the ones that showed me that, yeah, like your, where's your traffic site? You were one of the top websites. Um, you know, I say top 10, but I think it was actually top 100, which, you know, it felt like top 10 to me, but top 100 is still amazing. You know, like there's, there's so many powerful websites out there, um, you know, but I can't remember exactly where it was. I know it was up there, you know, there, there's powerful websites, but there aren't really that many that do well on a certain specific day. And that was the only day I was top 100. So um, other than like Google, Yahoo, MSN, certain other websites, not a lot of websites actually do that much traffic per day. But anyway, um, so that was really cool. Um, and that gave, got me to a point where I was, I had built and I was, I was writing a lot of articles. I branched my blog off. I would go to other blogs and I would really see how they built theirs. And I added extra elements to my blog. I had a TV section, I had a directory section, I had encyclopedias, I had all different kinds of different tools. I built this thing out, out the wazoo so that I would have every opportunity to cover this thing and be the biggest um, single distributor that I could be on this, uh, on, on, on the subject. So, um, yeah, that, that got to the point where I was getting, I, I'm trying to remember, consistently after the months where I was really, really killing it, but it would consistently turn into, um, I'm not sure, I think it was somewhere around 15, 20, 30,000 views um, a month. And then um, I was also getting advertising money through Google AdSense, and then I was also selling my own advertising. And then I had a couple other clients that I was doing other things for, you know, with the with the marketing that I could do on that website. And then finally, um, you know, as I was I was growing, I was like, okay, you know, I I didn't know what I wanted to do next, but really I knew that I wanted to start. I realized, you know, how big branding is and how with dedication, you know, cause that website took, I was building it for three, four years, but I realized with dedication and branding, you can build um, anything. And when I realized that, um, I, I decided I needed to take a step back. And so, and I wanted to build the, the whole big next thing. And so I ended up being able to sell that website, um, and then I used the money from that to kind of launch what I wanted to do next, which turned into many different websites before I ran or started the company that I'm doing now, Project Ford. And I also launched a lot of aspects of my art career. So with my book, I launched after I sold that website, I wrote my first book, Times Library. I was in my band, uh, Them Poets. And then shortly after that, I, um, when I moved to Texas about a year or so after selling my set, I, I um, launched my first solo song um, after after the, the the band slowed down. I don't think the band we never like officially canceled the bandness, but we just you know after I left, and um, I think a little bit before that we had kind of stopped being active. Um, but yeah, that's how I built that website up. I'm probably talking about it a bunch more because I'm like maybe there was a detail I missed out in there, but. Um, yeah, my, my homie Mr. Composition was asking me about it, and I was like, you know, that's very, very interesting. I wonder, what, what's a couple weird things that you think would be really interesting for people to know if you were going to imagine people having questions on the, on the website thing? Um, <clears throat> I think um, a couple of weird questions. So, I mean, you touched on about how long it took. Um, you know, what kept you going for that many years and I mean it's not obvious you know, for some yeah people. no that's a really big one and and where was you the know, height of the success within that time frame uh, I would say the height was probably selling it the height uh, one there were lots of different individual moments you know getting being one of the biggest websites in the cut in the world um, selling it um, 
how I felt, you know, mm -hmm. in my community, you know, because some people knew about it, and it just it felt cool, and I would even, like, paid a couple friends to write some stuff one day, and, you know, it, just, it, it felt cool to be that young running it, so running something that I came, and I remember I had a friend who was like, yo, like, what was it like? Because, you know, my friends saw me, they were like, and they were like, oh, you literally, like, this was like your baby, like, what is it like to have, like, a baby, and, you know? Facebook was young at this time, so it was like kind of cool. It was just becoming like cool. Like people were like saying, "Oh, like you could be like a, a you know, like there was a thing, you know, in this tech thing where you could be like a tech, a, te a, a whatever, you know, a, a, a tech inventor, a tech innovator." Um, and even Facebook was it was still young then, you know. I don't even know if the social network. I think it had just came out like 2011 or something. The year after I'd been doing my website for like three years. Um, and um, so yeah, that was cool. And then what was the first thing you said? Oh, um, what kept you going as far as so that's interesting because I feel like um, what I've known probably prior to that in the other brands that I had started was, and I think this is why it's cool if there's something that you do like a lot through your life. I it, it's kind of like I kind of think about like skating and stuff like that. It's like if you went to someone. And you were like, how did you know to like keep on going, you know, mm -hmm. doing a kickflip down the stairs? And he was like, well, like to us, it seems like the craziest thing. But he did like an off, he's been yawling for a while. And then, you know, <laughs> he learned how to kickflip. He did a kickflip down a two stair, did a three stair, four stair, five stair. He's probably done something similar to what he's doing before. So all the iterations that I had, which were a lot, you know, because I got into it so young, all the iterations that I had up until then, I knew that I could execute on everything underneath what I was building the top part for. Mm -hmm. Which means like I knew I had all the basic skills down to understand how to show up mm -hmm. in like as a website. I wasn't like me trying to figure out websites. I had already I knew the basic stuff which was I had gone through a lot of trials and when I discovered oh the platform I use, a lot of people they go so fancy and crazy, but the single best platform for websites is still Blogger. And it's very fascinating. I don't use Blogger because of the fact that for for um, right now, for one of my websites, for my main website, because I need more stuff and I wanted to shop, and so I decided to do it all in one. But up until then, even with my pro website, I was still using Blogger, which is completely free. But there's a major thing with it. Blogger is owned by Google. Google is going to be your number one traffic source um, over the course of your branding. So, um, and that might change, and obviously there's other ways to get more, but I'm talking about like, just like passive. It's not really passive, because you have to put the things in place, but as far as like recurring passive traffic, Google, so, and Blogger, I noticed, um, I'm sure there's ways to do this on other platform, but Blogger, it's, it indexes very easily in, in certain um, Google aspects. So I don't know if that's illegal that Google's doing that, but it works. So um, by the time I had arrived at that, so it was basically, I was, the only thing that I was iterating on was the branding and that too, which is why with that first one I did it, I did it so many times before. And the thing is, I also did not, but I knew that, uh, I knew I had the foundation and then I knew the other thing is that I knew, I know how to iterate until something is successful. Mm -hmm. And that is about just understanding like the pace of stuff and like so, cause uh, and one thing that I used to think about a lot was how many times I changed the logo for that website and how much editing really went into that website. The hours, 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 the hours of editing, the hours of photo, um, the, the new graphics that I would come up for different things to make it look um, um, better. So, and you know, the thing is, I don't even, yeah, so that, that's kind of, um, and it's, it's the same thing for me now. It's like, okay, but what that taught me is, oh, it got me to a certain level, then my art got me to a certain level, but you know, the visible part that I'm building is only because I have so much confidence in the invisible part. Yeah. You know, because it's hard to need a lot on the area that you're working to build. But the cool thing is the faster you build, the more tools you have for the invisible part. And the invisible part, nobody can shake that. There's certain things that I can do 
that will always generate revenue for for my business and people don't really always understand how serious that is when it comes to sustainability like you know like even if it's only 15 percent of your goal revenue even if it's only 10 percent of your goal revenue even if it's only five one percent of your goal revenue as soon as you start independ independently producing revenue all those percentages are called free mm -hmm. right. you're now one percent free you're now two percent free I don't know about you, but 2% free sounds pretty good to me. I never griped on that. I never, it wasn't so much that. It was always like, if I can get this up to 4%, I'm going to be so happy because 3% was amazing, right. you know? And then, uh, and that, and so it's like, you know, so I get into 16, 17, 20, 30, 40, 100% is, 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 I don't know if that's the goal, but it's out there. I think it's more of a matter of necessity. And that's about what do you want to do to change? I think I had a really big reason. Anything that I've ever started, it was because I was changing the world. Like, straight up, you know, because I always saw myself as a world changer. So I think so deep and long term about... So it doesn't matter. It's not about um, really anything else other than that. So I have the infinite drive to um, build, I think, just because of that. I realize how important that is, you know, but anyway. All righty, y'all. That was one, I, one little thing on it. Hope y'all are doing well. So, um, yeah, if you want to um, sell a website... Go buy it on GoDaddy. That's what I, my, I left that part out. I bought it on GoDaddy. I sold it. I don't even remember where I sold it. There's like websites where you can, oh, that's a good technology. There's websites where you can sell websites. So look around at different ones. I posted um, um, a high price, which was based off of, I don't even think I did a very good job, but even then I think I did it based off of like three times what the website was making at its max. Now, yeah, so based off the revenue. So I did that and um, someone bought it for that exactly. And uh, they sent me a check in the mail and I said, <laughs> 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 I said, my friends, I will be right back. I'm going to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't even say I'm going to the bank because I was also a very sneaky person. I was like, oh, you guys are having fun? No, no, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going for a walk. <laughs> and then, um, and then of course, the MacBook arrived on the doorstep. The queue was like, they said, where is the MacBook coming from? And then, uh, the Coachella tickets were purchased. I don't know if that was the, the, what, I don't know if all the moves are great. The MacBook was a great move. The Coachella tickets were actually the fact a great that move. You because you literally sold the website that yeah. was able to get you a MacBook and Coachella tickets. Yes. That should literally be like the title of it. How, you know, a lot yes. of websites. And other stuff. Here. Yeah. Those were the two, the two big ones that I remember doing. Um, but, you know, I would say that for a young person, you know, like, Festivals are interesting. But what I got out of Coachella, other than getting to see some of my actual favorite bands, like, I don't, I don't go to one because I'm like, I don't really care. And, unless some of the lineups are very good, but even still, I'm too old kind of to be in the desert. It's hot out there, people. Um, but, uh, you know, the business I'm running right now, Project Four, the, the my elevator pitch when I made that originally was. I'm trying to build Netflix plus Coachella. And that's what I've been saying for the... Uh, actually, I haven't said it that much in the last three years because I'm so in doing it. But that's what I was saying in the very beginning and that's what I still hold it to. So and Coachella did inspire me. Not so much in anything other than I feel like I can do it better. And it's the same thing with Netflix. I, I watch Netflix and I've been to Coachella and I think that the platforms are amazing. I think that there hasn't been much iteration on it. And so being able to to take those two things that people love the most right now, 
as far as I can tell. And uh, as far as when it comes to entertainment and um, and iterating that thing is my life's is my life's passion because I feel like just like with poetry, I feel like the greatest effect that I can have here on this earth is by bringing balance through those two outputs, which is the Coachella idea and the Netflix idea. Mm -hmm. Because I see what's out there, and I, of all the things that I'm good at, media, communication, have always been, overwhelmingly, before I even meant for them to be my greatest thing. Um, and start, you know, starting fifth grade with poetry, starting kindergarten winning an art contest, kind of just reinforced that thing. My dad hanging up all my construction work pieces mm -hmm. and my mom, you know, getting me through church services with doodling. Uh, so. You're doodling for Jesus. Oh, well, yeah, there's flowers. <laughs> Jesus likes flowers. Hi, everybody likes flowers. Um, you know what's fun? This story isn't that important, but I'm gonna put it down because I've never said it before. But one of my favorite things, I don't know if it was because I was just getting older, but you know, like drawing was like, you know, you're not like a very good drawer, but I remember being in church one time. You know, they have the little um, pews. They have the, I don't, I haven't been to a church that has this kind of thing in a long time, but they have like where they put the hymnals and then they have this thing where there, there would be like a pencil, there'd be like a little place for the, for the tie of envelopes, and then there'd be like two little holes or something for the um, um, for the um, communion mm. cups. And I remember it was just this like, in interesting kind of geometric shape. And um, I remember one day I was like sketching it out and trying to follow the lines of it, and I was drawing it, and it looked really good. <laughs> and I like that, like <laughs> to me, it was like this weird little moment of like, what have I just done? I have translated the corporeal into two dimensions. And um, so yeah, I think I just fell in love basically with with art and um, a certain kind of art very young. But anyway, how I sold my website and bought a MacBook and Coachella tickets and launched my my career as a publisher. Goodbye, guys.